Good morning viewers. I've had a question asked from one of the viewers to show you how to put on a bandage which is quite a nice um, topic to do so thanks for the question let's show you how to do it. Um, you can never put on a bandage that's not rolled up so first thing it must be rolled up so if you've taken it off while you're taking it off you roll it into a sausage. The next thing that you must remember is you always want to put the bandage on in a figure of eight doesn't matter which way you put it on you can inside outside upside down whatever it doesn't matter as long as it's kind of like a figure of eight so I'll show you try and show you a couple of areas um, we'll do the ankle and then we'll do the wrist and then we'll do a uh, we'll see what else we can do so what you do is you st it doesn't matter where you start whether you start up here or down there it doesn't actually really matter but let's start over here for the vicinity on this so say for instance I've twisted my ankle you've seen my video of my twisted ankle so let's show you how we do that so we'll start putting the bandage on. Now when I put the bandage on, don't make it too loose and don't pull it too tight. If you pull it tight, it's going to cause a lot of compression on your ankle and it can actually make your, your toes swell and go blue. So it mustn't be too tight. You don't also don't want it too loose because if it's too loose then it slides up and down and it's pointless. Okay, so we start off with just putting it on around the ankle. Then from there we're going to just start with the figure eight. So figure eight round and round. Figure eight round and round and that's that's it that's how you put on a bandage and then if you want more stability around the ankle because maybe it's getting a bit fat around the ankle then you come a couple of times around the ankle and then you can swap direction and bring it around so now instead of going one way I've now gone the other way around the ankle and when it comes to the end of the ankle you've been given these fancy little crocodile clips that you will just clip on. I don't know where the other one disappeared to. It fell off when I was busy here. Yeah? And you just clip it on. And um, it's very important to have compression on your ankle when you've twisted your ankle because you've got that rice regime. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. And what that means is resting the ankle. You must have your ankle up. All right. Now don't have it just the ankle up so that your knee is hanging. Because if your knee hangs, your knee will get very, very painful. So you must have the whole leg elevated from the knee so that the knee is properly supported all the way along the ankle. So if you're sitting, you will have your leg up, supported from the knee down to the ankle. All right. If you are in bed, you might find that the blankets will be too painful on your feet. So you can then either put pillows on either side of your leg so that they lift the blanket off your feet because in summer it's great you can still lie on top of the bed and your foot can stick out but in winter it gets too cold and when it gets cold your ankle gets sore and aches all right so you'd put pillows on either side so that the blanket rests on the pillows and not on the foot all right you might find that you sleep with a moon boot I tried to wear the moon boot when I had twisted my ankle and I found it was too painful on, on my lateral uh, malleolus so I, I had to take it off, um, but my ankle wasn't broken. If it's broken, you wear that moon boot. You can't take it off. You only take it off to bath so that your foot doesn't stink to high heaven. But um, otherwise, you wear that moon boot because you need the stability so that the bone can regrow. If it's constantly going to be moving, 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 you're going to make your ankle um, take longer to grow on. All right. So you want to elevate it. You want to rest, rest it as much as possible. If it hangs down and you're walking a lot, um, it will swell more and that swelling inhibits your, your development and your growth. Hello Lambert. So you want to come up here, come say hello. So rest, ice it, you ice it every two hours to reduce the swelling in the area. You compress it, that's with the bandage, so you compress it so that it just doesn't allow the swelling to just go mayhem. And a rest, ice, compression and elevation is this. Okay, so you're not going to be walking on your feet a lot. That's where we showed you the video of walking with the crutches, the non-weight bearing. And then as it gets better, it will be partial weight bearing. And then uh, or toe touch weight bearing. And then partial weight bearing. And then full weight bearing maybe with crutch on the, on the opposite side. And then from there, normal gait. All right. So this is how you would do it. Now, if you're wanting to take your um, bandage off, remember I said to you, you are not going to... Um, bandage it so that it comes off so you start rolling it off immediately so you don't let it come off you must roll it into a little sausage again because we want to show you how to maybe do another area of your body so we're going to roll it up 
You can wash your bandages because otherwise they get mighty stinky. You just do hand washing of your bandage so that that's nice and clean. Um, and then you maybe have a spare bandage. Wash your bandage when it's finished and you finished using it. Keep your bandages. Don't chuck them away. You never know when you're going to have an injury. I'm a frequent flyer of injuries. They are common occurrences for me. I was obviously got the luck, lucky draw of the the lot when I was born. So I have had injuries upon injuries upon injuries. It becomes a, a non-entity after a while. So don't panic about your stuff. And know that an injury, like a twisted ankle, can take six months to a year before it's totally better. So you might find that in uh, cold weather you might get an achy ankle. You might find um, on a really hot day your ankle might swell. If you've been very busy and up on it a lot or started doing sport, it might swell again as well. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to do a wrist. Okay, so we'll start off around the doesn't matter which way you go so I'm going to because I've got to do it myself I'm going to block it with my body just to get it started all right so you're going to just get it going around there so say for instance I've hurt my wrist up here now if I just do the wrist around there like that I'm not really going to get the wrist because your wrist actually sits here in your hand so we're going to do a figure eight around the thumb and then around the wrist again you see now I'm getting a really nice wrist movement there all right now if I'm wanting to change direction, so I'm wanting to get lots of wrists there, I can do another wrist around there like that. And then watch, now I'm going to come up around the hand, you might twist it, whoopsie daisy. Let's just roll it up again, because you can't have a loose bandage, because then it doesn't give nice compression. Alright, now it's going to, I can twist it going around the hand, so that it can cause, so that it's um, just a little bit easier, it doesn't make a big bully key in the hand, whoops, there we go again. Up we roll again. It's quite difficult to do it with your own hand. And then around the hand we go again like that. You see? Like so. Ish. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. And where's my crocodile clip? Now I can feel this is quite nice and tight. You've got to watch your fingers. They must not swell and they must not go blue and this must be comfortable. You will feel that it's too tight almost immediately. All right, then you need to take it all off, roll it all up again, start again, but don't pull it as tight so that your fingers don't go swollen and they don't go blue. All right, you can do uh, just ordinary. If it was just, say, for instance, this part of your arm, you wouldn't do a figure of eight. You'd just go round and round and round and round and then connect it with the crocodile clip. You can do your knees. That would also just go round and round. You can kind of like do a bit of a figure eight on the knee as well between the top half of the knee and the bottom half of the knee. And that's how you put on a bandage. So there's no uh, right or wrong way as long as it's not too tight or not too loose. And it must just give good compression on the area so that it doesn't swell as much. And it also makes it just feel a little bit more comfortable having the bandage on. You'll find that um, if it's maybe a cold day and your ankle is very sore and it's very achy, a nice little bandage on the area will help to just warm it up so that it doesn't ache as much. Now, for your injuries, oh, you won't wear it for long. So maybe the first couple of days, maybe up to a week after the injury, if you've sprained your ankle or something like that. Sometimes a bit longer if you find that your ankle is very painful. You might find that you get, you get these wrist guards and you get ankle um, splints and that that you can buy from your chemist that will um, replace a bandage so you might find that you put the bandage on for the first couple of days and then while you're starting your rehabilitation because you're wanting to take your um, brace off so you want to take your cast off and you want to take your ankle guard off and your knee guard off and your wrist guard off in between to do your strengthening exercises and your stretches and your exercises because that's what's going to make it better. If you just keep the bandage on, or you keep your um, guard, ankle guard, foot guard, wrist guard on, it actually weakens the muscles because it alters your origin and insertion. So if you've got a knee guard on for argument's sake, there's my knee guard. You're altering the insertion and origin of your thigh muscle. So instead of your thigh muscle implanting down here, it now stops here because you've got your bandage here and it weakens this part of your leg and then can... Um, cause your problem to continue so there is a fine line and that's where your physiotherapy comes in because it's very important for them to tell you when to take it off how to wean it how to get it off because you can't also just go from wearing it 24 7 
to taking it off and not having anything. You would need to wean it off so that your muscles get chance to grow and strengthen. And so you'd take it off every two hours, do your exercises, leave it off for about half an hour, and then put it back on when your body is getting tired. So um, thanks for the great question. Hope you enjoyed the video. If there's any other questions like that, please post. I look forward to hearing from you guys. So have a great day. Cheers for now. Bye.